Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to our third Sunday service, second Sunday service. Amen. In the month of April, this Palm Sunday, this highly um, celebrated religious day for us, as we know, Jesus entered into the city in preparation for the resurrection, his crucifixion, his resurrection. Amen. Um, it's always a good research for the for the church family to go back to always read over again Palm Sunday. So many sermons that take place in that week of Palm Sunday to Resurrection Day. Um, it's always of good interest. I, I always appreciate when the young and the old alike will ask, you know, what is Palm Sunday? What does it represent um, as Jesus entered the city and they cried, Hosanna. Be good Bible research for you to do um, in your time. And so we're delayed in our start, amen, but as we get ready for the Word of God, we're delayed for our remote service, amen, it's around this time, usually when we're in the sanctuary, we're getting started um, for our extended family throughout, and so while you get yourselves ready um, for the Word of God this second Sunday, um, God has blessed us by way of the Spirit with a, a word for the, for the time, a word for His people. And so we want you to get ready to hear and receive the word of God on this virtual Sunday service. Amen. For the truth and holiness family. Amen. It isn't good to know God. It's, it's a beautiful day. It's a day in which we can celebrate. And, you know, any day, if it's raining or not, we can always celebrate God. Uh, but it's just good when we're grateful in the day, grateful for all that God has done. Family, I'm going to ask that you will come along with me in the word of prayer. And as we proceed out of prayer, by the grace of God, let us get into the word of God. Um, and so we want you to get yourselves ready for church, you know, get yourselves ready for the word of God. Um, get yourselves ready to receive from God. I know we're not in the sanctuary. I, I love the sanctuary. I love seeing you. I, I love being able to make, I, I preach different when I'm in the sanctuaries. You know, I can't see you virtual. Um, it, but uh, the spirit is different and it is always something liking when we're not together. But uh, I'm always reminded, you know, during this COVID season, how we have the New Testament Bible. It's because Paul could not preach in person. And while it pained him as well to not be in person, he had to write letters. And, and through those epistles, we have uh, two thirds of the New Testament Bible. Uh, because of that. And so who knows what God is blessing us by way of this virtual message. Those that could probably have never made it to the sanctuary could get the word of God today. So while we struggle and strain through, um, as always excited, I'm, I'm grateful for God giving us an opportunity through this medium to minister the word of God. And uh, while we're getting used to it and get accustomed to it, God's work is being done. So I'm ready. I'm ready for the word. I'm not stalling. I just want you to get ready. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get it. Let us start out with prayer. Um, we're going to get it to small word, 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, really. So we'll probably end on the same time. So it could be a 20 minute word, uh, depending on how the spirit leads and guide us accordingly. But first, because we can't do anything without God and we need God in everything. Come with me um, in a word of prayer. Um, if you could pray along with me. Our Father, who else in heaven, dear Lord, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to come to minister your word. Father, I want to pray for myself first. I ask, Father, in the name of your Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that you would bless me, Father, to stand and to minister this word that you've given to me by way of your spirit. I ask, Father, in the name of your Son, Yeshua, that your blessings and anointing be with me and upon me to minister the word. And Father, I also ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless the ministry of that word. And Father, I'm also praying and asking that for those that are to hear this word and to receive this word, Father, we ask that you will bless and be with them, Father, that thereby, Father, they can incorporate this word into their lives. And through that, they shall receive your blessings. And your name shall receive the glory. Father, I pray, I trust, I believe, I love, as I ask these prayers and blessings, I ask them all, Father, in your son Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Now, family. Now, fam. Okay. We got that out of the way. Okay. I'll talk to you, 
for a little bit. Okay, okay. We went before heaven because I can't do anything without it. Can't move without it. Can't sing without it. Can't praise without it. Can't pray without it. I'm not blessed. All of my blessings come from the Lord. And so now that I pray, hallelujah, now that I talk to him, now that I know God's power is on me, I just got one thing for you. Can you help me? Praise the Lord. Can you help me put some hands together? Can you help me open your mouth? Oh, Jesus. Tell God, thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Praise goes before the victory. Praise goes before the victory. If you're looking for it, if you know God has it, oh, Jesus. If you know God is doing it, Come on, family. Somebody help me. Tell God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For everything. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on, celebrate. Hands together. Hands together. Open mouths. Open miles. Yes. 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 Woo. That's for somebody that knows the Lord. Woo. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's all. That's all. That's all. Thank you, Ben. Boom. Thank you, Ben. Amen. Bless God when you know it's yours. When you know when you know who's on your side. When you know what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah, family. Ooh, I know some of us. You know what you need to put on your your cubicles on your desk. You know what you need. You need on your screensaver Jehoshaphat. Don't ever forget Jehoshaphat. The Bible says, as they went out to battle. They began to praise the Lord, and as they began to sing praises to the Lord, the Bible says the angel of the Lord showed up and said, This battle, preach pastor, you won't have to fight. This battle is the Lord's. Amen, family. So I know, I already know, before I woke up Monday morning, before I get on that job, before before I turn on that computer, before before I get in that truck, before before I get in there, before I start, before I unlock the doors, I want to start out with a Jehoshaphat praise. Amen. Angels go before me. Angels wipe out my enemies. Angels be my victory. Hallelujah. Praise. Yes goes before the victory. Family, open your Bibles with me, please. This Palm Sunday, Old Testament scripture, and I want you to go with me to Micah. Micah chapter 5. Amen. Uh, one of these great, great prophets of God prophesied during the time of Isaiah um, and albeit his book wasn't as long, his prophecies were as powerful. And so God has blessed us. I told you a small message, small message, but it's for somebody, by the grace of God. It's, you know, it's, it's good when the pastor, when the man and woman of God can, can hone in on who the message is for. It, it, it allows us to stay focused and inspired. Right? I don't have to worry about I know sometimes a message is not always for everybody. You know? And when you can uncheck that box and say, okay, man of God, woman of God, it's not for everybody, but it's for who it's for. That's when you're on assignment. That's when you know the Spirit has grabbed you and said, I got a message for somebody. And I pray, I hope it's you, I hope it's you, because there's nothing like getting that rainbow word from the Lord that can change your life in a moment. Can change your life, and you can you can text pastor. You you can say you can you can text us now and say that word was for me. Amen. 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 Uh, Micah chapter five. 
Some of you may know this word um, often. I, I, it is a seasonal message. Normally it's preached around the time of Christmas. So it was, I, you know, I was a surprise as the Spirit gave it to us uh, to, to meet a minister. You know, I said, well, I know we're getting into Resurrection Day coming up um, next week. Amen. Resurrection Day is um, next Sunday. But um, as, as, as this is Palm Sunday, um, we're in the religious time of the resurrection and not the birth, right? So Micah chapter 5, and we want to begin reading at verse 2, is only one verse. Typically, it is where the message will center around the birth of Christ. Um, but there is a message in that. Two points, a message, two points, some highlights. Um, that we'll get. And so, uh, Sister Allen, church family, if y'all give me, uh, by the grace of God, as I can see it for now, about 20 minutes, we'll be done. So hang in there with me. The word of God says um, in Micah, prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, this is from the NIV. Some of you know the scripture very well from the KGV. But it says this, but thou, uh, KGV says, O Bethlehem, but thou Bethlehem Arafatha. He says, though thou be little. It's the NIV, though thou be little. What I can appreciate is the King James, it says, though thou be small. Though thou be small. NIV says, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. He says, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel who's going to uh, who's going forth have been from old from everlasting so what does the scripture say to us in in that opening though thou be small something great is coming out of you Though thou be small, which is my title, Deb, though thou be small, you know, though thou be little, what does the man of God say? Something great is coming out of you. Though thou be small is the title of the message. Well, I feel like I'm in a church, but I guess I am in a church. Uh, family, I used to I used to hear this word when I was coming up as a minister. Um, one of my, you know, most young men Women of God will attract themselves to someone that they will mirror their preaching style behind, right? And coming up in the Baptist church, we had, we had many great uh, orators and speakers and, 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 and pastors who could, who could preach a, a, a sermon with a melody and it make you sound like they were singing a song of Mahalia Jackson. Their, their voice was so melodic and, and so soothing and inspirational. Um, it, it, we, we had many men of God who we could see to mirror ourselves behind and to emulate in style of preaching. But for me, if you want, you know, my, my inspiration has always been Martin Luther King. Um, I, I really, I, I could understand his words. And while the power that, that, that just emanated from his voice and from his message, he, was a, he had both going on. You know, he spoke in words, his sermons were short. He, could, he spoke that was inspirational. And I was able to, and they were intelligible. I was able to, to gain knowledge and inspiration from it. And I noticed that when you gravitate towards more of those old school preachers back in the day, they didn't, they didn't just have a, it's time to close and <laughs> go into a home. It's, 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 you know, but my point is that when you, when you get inspired by C.L. Franklin, Martin Luther King, um, these types of ministers, uh, 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 Reverend Daniels, and, and you, when you have them as your inspiration, you, they, their power came through the civil rights movement and, and Jim Crow. And you would hear the word um, that I often, you, you won't hear it in regular language, but you would hear the word marginalize. Marginalize. You know, marginalize. And, and it was how they felt as a people, as African Americans coming up in the society of black Americans, as the Negro race, uh, as the, when they were coming through Jim Crow, they felt marginalized. And so because 
that's not an everyday word. We definitely, he talked about critical race theory. You don't hear that word coming from other races other than African Americans. And so it would always spark me to have an understanding of the word because in the use of the word, and, and so I would look it up and to remind myself of the meaning and, and, and try to, to, you know, grapple with the understanding of what these men of God was trying to say. And when they used the word marginalized, they, they, they pointed towards that we are, that, you know, you are treating us as if we are insignificant. You know, as if we are less than. We, we're reading now, we're hearing on the news about how some of our uh, uh, Amazon formal and, and current employees develop a union because they were feeling marginalized. They were feeling that, that, that someone bigger was taking advantage of someone smaller. And so they said, we got to learn how to fight back because if you don't put truth to power, if you don't fight the power, you will stay small and you'll never go anywhere. If you let the man keep holding you down, right? So now, Pastor. So the, the, the word that uh, they would use in this young preacher looking to Emily is, they say, as a people, sometimes we feel marginalized. He, he won't let us in the door. Don't let us get job opportunities. Can't, can't live in certain neighborhoods. Can't, can't get certain credit. Can't, can't get small business loans. And, and so when you feel insignificant and when you feel small, it makes you want to fight back. Right? It makes you want to try to, it, 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 it allows you to go within a strength because you say, if, if, if that's how you're going to treat me, it'll stay that way for my, my next generation, the next generation. So someone picks up on it and says, though I'm small, though I feel marginalized, though, though I feel like I am insignificant, and not just in terms of race, but even in terms of life. And my upbringing, and, 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 and my pedigree, and my, my neighborhood, and my ethnicity, and my nationality, and my nation, and my nation of origin, I feel like I'm marginalized. I, I'm, I'm not the majority. I'm, I, I don't look like the majority. I don't talk like the majority. I have idioms about me that singles me out, and because of that, I'm marginalized. We're, we're reading in the news, right? The, the, the African immigrants in Ukraine feel like, hey, hey, <laughs> we're dodging missiles, and we're dodging racism all at the same time. That's marginalized, right? That's when you feel less than. That's, 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 that's when you feel like the, the, you know, the weight of the world is on you and everyone is against you. That's life. And like I said, the message is not for everyone. But I know, I know, I know in my life there are times where I walk in situations, I am in situations, and I feel like situations where I am the one that's less there. And based on how you interpret uh, that feeling of less than it could be a, it, it could manifest itself in your life. For example, priest pastor, if you feel less than, you'll act less than. If you feel like you'll never acquire or never aspire to get to a certain level, that's the behavior you will put forth. I might as well. I'll never be. That can never happen to me. I could never have that house. I could never have that job. I could never get that degree. I could never have that marriage. My children could never. And when if you if you accept the marginalized mindset, guess what you do? You are manifested. Preach, Pastor. If if you feel like uh because I am less than. If you feel like if, if, if they're going to give you a stereotype, preach pastor, that, yeah, that says that's you, and if you accept it, that's what you'll walk in. That's what you'll walk in because you're less than. You could never be as smart. You could never be as rich. You could never be as happy. You could never have what they have because you're small. But the word of God tells us. What I said, 20 minutes. Oh, I was seeing that. What the, the word of God says, though thou be small. Isn't that great of God? God said, I, I, 
you know, I, you know, I, 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 I said to myself, I'm not, I'm not going to try to internalize this message. I'm not going to make a, a you know, a correlation. But he says it, the word of God. God is speaking to an audience and says, though you be small. I, I couldn't help but in my study, I, I think about Israel and how small Israel is. How small Israel is. But, the, but God said, I chose you. I think about Abraham, how Abraham had to leave his, his land of earth. He had to go to a foreign land. You, I, you, God, you couldn't even make, I mean, he could have, but God, how about make me be where I am? You have to, I'm sent to a foreign territory, the land of the Canaanites, to the land of Canaan. I have to go here and struggle to survive to come up. God say, I take the small. He started with one. Chose Israel. Chose David the least. And then, don't let us forget. Oh, I want to call y'all names so bad. Maria, he went by Gideon. And he said, and Gideon said, how you going to choose me? I'm the, I, I, I am the smallest in the smallest clan. God, oh Jesus. God doesn't care about who's marginalized. Because God, God said, with my power. See, you can't internalize being marginalized because God said, with my power, though you be small. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, they started out. They got old money. Yeah, yeah, mom and dad went to college. They ain't grandparents went to college. Yeah, yeah, they got hair start on you. Yeah, 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 things were better for them. Yeah, yeah, by definition, some definitions, you are smaller. But though thou be small, though thou be little, though thou don't have what they have, it doesn't mean that God can't pull something great. So he gives this word. He gives this word. I want, to, I, want to, I want to get into my points. Uh, he gives this word where we know already God God, God, God says, I know you're small, but I have this thing where I love to confound the wise. I, I love, I love, oh Jesus. I, I love, I love to be able to show the world and I, if, if, if I, if I can connect with the right person, please God, I, if I can just get my anointing on the right individual, if I can just get the right somebody to see that with God, I can do all things. If I can just get the right person to connect with me, I'll take you from wherever you are. I, I, I'll take you from wherever your background. I'll take you from whatever's going on in your life right now. And God said, I can use you. Because though thou be small. And so in, in point one, point one, God says, yeah, my perspectives are not man perspective. Right? Man says you have to have certain accolades, certain, yeah, certain, yeah, certain people behind you, certain references, certain people to vouch for you, certain, certain places in order to be good. But God said, I can see you in your small college. I, I can find you wherever you are. Because my perspective is, if I want David to be king, I know everyone else in front of him. They're taller. They look better. They got it going on. They're warriors. They've been in it. But here's, here come the baby. The baby, God said, I can use the right person. And so his perspectives, God. Perspectives are not man's perspectives. And what does that say? What does that say? Number one, number one, no matter where you are, who you are, where you come from, where is that right now? Number one, God sees all of us. Come on now, come. God sees all of us. Wait, me too, but he sees you. Well, Pastor, I know he sees you because you got to preach the word. You got to hear from the word. I know he sees you, but he sees me too sitting in the back, in the corner of the church. He God sees you too. And God is in your life also. And God can move in your life also. It's not just the one with the mic. It's the one sitting in the pew. It's the one singing in the choir. It's the one ushering. It's the one in the cubicle. It's the one in the back of the line. God can use anybody because he sees all of us. You mean 
my marriage could be that good? Yeah. You mean my money could be that low? Yeah. You mean I can live that? Yeah. Why? Because God said, I see everybody. Yes. I, don't, I don't just see one race. Imagine, I know some races think God is just a God of one race. Or God is just a God of one nation or two nations. God is not just the God of America and Israel. He's the God of Africa, Europe, Spain, Russia, South America, Central America. He's all over because he's God. And if he can bless you, guess what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, family. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves. God is not the God of a few. He's the God of all. And while folk act like that, God say, I see, in fact, in fact, I'm going to put you to shame. Because I know how to take people of color and put an anointing on them. I know how to take, I know how to take the quiet one and make them a lead. I know how to do that. I know, listen, listen, family. I know because I see everybody. I know how to take someone with a checkered past and make them great. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. I know how to use somebody. I know how to go get Paul. I know how to change minds. I, I can see the small. So family, this is a message. It's a message today of hope and inspiration. For someone that thinks that, you know, you have to be big. I mean, just think about that for a minute. Just think about the message. Think about God's pattern of how he used. Some of us are running out to a big church. I know, I know. I just had to slip it in there, right? Because we are think God can't speak to us in a little church. But if you follow the pattern, if you follow, if you follow the pattern, it wasn't, it wasn't the big church that saved Jesus. It was the big church that said, Jesus. Right? It, it was the small church still at the cross. Oh, it was the small church that took him down. It was the small church that came to, the, to, to his tomb. It, it was the small church that started this. In the living room. In the den. Outside. We got to the edifice because of the small church. The miracles happen where? The power started where? God can use you. Look, girl. Look, girl. God can use you. Champ, I know. I know you made mistakes. Join the crowd. God can use you. Number one, he sees all of us. Marginalized, he sees all of us. Talked about, he sees all of us. In fact, I'm going to throw in. I'm just going to throw in this parenthetically. I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to go for my old Baptist. Yeah, I, I'm just going to drop this in. I got a point too, but but you know what? I I I, know, I can see God say, all I need somebody is to trust me. See, it becomes a matter of faith. So so while I am small, but if I can get with it and say that now, 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 if God can see me, God can use me. And if God can use me, that means I can get whatever it is I desire. So God said, it's not that you're small or you're big, but if you can get with trusting in me, if you, if you can see the vision, if, if you can speak the vision, if you can believe the vision, oh, God said, I can use you. If you can see it coming, I said that's just what I need. So number one, number one, God sees us all. Prove it. Number two, uh, uh, point one, bravo. If I can throw in parentheses, uh, all I need to do is connect to that. And so then, then fuzzy soft music. Point two. He sees me. And if I can trust that he can see me, can I tell you something? I want to close out with this. I want to close out with this in soft music, Fonzie. I want to close out with, I want, I want the family, I purposely, I, I, I said I just, want to, I, I just want to go home on this. If God sees the marginalized, 
Again, Webster says marginalized, insignificant, right? The minority, the immigrant, the less educated, the no pedigree, the checker past, the marginalized. If God, by history and evidence, sees the marginalized, sees the small, and brings great things. He told Bethlehem, though you are small, something great is coming out of you. God sees us all. My faith can connect with what he sees. Can I ask you a question? How do you, how do you know what God is planning to do in your life? That's my second point. What plan? If God can use me, you, you don't know what God has in store for you. Can I give you some hope? Can I help you turn that corner? Because if God can use the marginalized, if God can go to Bethlehem and say I'm bringing something great, if God can choose disciples that no one thought was religious or no one thought was good enough, if God has a habit of going after the marginalized to make their names great, you don't know what God is planning to do with you. Not for you. Not for you. With you. You don't know what God is planning to do with you. Can I ask you a question? Soft music phones. Will you be ready for it? If God called you, we sing the song, we sing the song, if the Lord needs somebody, here I am, send me. Can God come after you? Can God use you to celebrate his name, to make him, to make his name glorious in the earth? Can you be the salt? Can you be a witness? Can, can God use you as an example to shame the wise, to shame, to shame those in power and say, see what I can do with my child? Could you take that responsibility? Could you raise your hand and say, God, here I am. Use me to your glory. Use, use my checkered past to your glory. Use my failures to your glory. Use everything. Come on. Use everything that I messed up. Use me now. For, can you, can you, can you answer? Because God said, I see you. And if you trust in me, I can do some great things. Can, 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 hey, family. Can you be a light for God? Wait, wait, wait. Not just, not, not just for you. But can God partner with you? So that you get blessings, yeah. But his name gets the glory. Because you know how the story will go. Her. Him. What? And when you give him the glory. They're going to go home thinking about that. If God, listen to me, family, can do that for them, if God did that thing, they don't, they, they don't even have half of what I have. But if God did that for them, it's a wake up call, family. It's a wake up call. So, the title of the message, I said, what, 20, 25 minutes? Though thy be small, God sees you. If you get your faith right, he can use you. And I raise the question, you, do, you have, you, do you know what God is planning on doing with you? You don't even know. But if you accept it, if you raise your hand, if you sign up and say, it's not, not just for, for, for somebody to see me, Father, but let me let this, let this small, marginalized individual partner with you so that, yes, I'll get blessings, but more, your name will get the glory. I want you to think about that, family. Inspiration and homework, though that be small. 
Family, this is our second Sunday message. We're looking to uh, come back to you by the grace of God, God's willing, for our Resurrection Day service next week. And with that, we want to close out in prayer and an invitation for discipleship. Father, we thank you, Father, for the word that was ministered. We thank you for providing means and opportunity for church service and the ministry of your word. Father, for those that are to hear this word, we're asking that you would bless them to receive it. Incorporated in their lives that your name shall receive the glory. Their lives shall be blessed. And Father, for those that are looking for discipleship and ministry and or salvation for their eternal soul and everlasting place, should it be by your grace that they connect either or through this ministry? Father, we ask that you would bless and reach out to them. Touch them, Father, as you shall insist by your will and your purpose. We pray and ask these prayers and blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.